Follow the yellow brick road. 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 Where did Dorothy trip and fall down at? On the yellow slip road. Follow, follow, follow the yellow brick road. Thanks for stopping by my YouTube channel. Recently, I met my friend Brian in Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. Oconomowoc claims to be the place that the movie The Wizard of Oz first debuted in theaters. That fact can be disputed, though. Nonetheless, I wanted to meet there because I wanted to take him to see my friends at Cowabunga Comics. The last time I went to Cowabunga Comics, I had an amazing time in the store. It was everything I wanted a comic book store to be. Some of the books I picked up from that first visit you can see in my Comic Book Editions Volume 148 video. So I wanted to take Brian there, have a good time with him, and hang out and spend the day together, and that's exactly what we did recently. Before I show you the books that I picked up during that journey, I wanted to show you a gift that Brian brought for me, and I was so appreciative of this. This is a 2024 Marvel Comics One Day at a Time calendar, and I am in desperate need of it. Right now, I have no calendar at all, even for this year, let alone for next year. So I've been needing a calendar. Now I've got a great superhero one with a different image every day to enjoy. So thank you so much for my gift, Brian, and spending time with me. I always enjoy spending time with you, and I enjoyed the food that we did and the journey that we had in Oconomowoc. I've actually been looking at some other calendars, superhero themed. I think that I might not be done for calendars for next year, even though I have this awesome one already. I've been looking at a trends calendar. They have a Wonder Woman one for next year that I think I need to have. And I'm also deb uh, debating rather if I need to have their DC Comics calendar with some vintage images, some Garcia Lopez images as well. So we'll see if I end up picking those up or not, but I kind of want them. Thanks, Brian, for the calendar, though. Really do appreciate it. Let's get into some of my purchases from that time at Cowabunga Comics. I have been in a major Fantastic Four kick lately, and I've really been in the kick of wanting to get books, not only from the Bronze Age, because that's my wheelhouse, but from the time that Medusa was a member of the FF. I know that in publishing time, she was a member for about three to three and a half years or so, but in comic book time, she was only a member for a few months. You might remember my Comic Book Editions Volume 164 video. I picked up an FF issue at a comic book show that had her on it. She wasn't, she was, she was a little bit on the cover, but she really wasn't in the issue a whole lot because that was more a Silver Surfer oriented story. But it was still good and I still enjoyed it. But I think after picking that one up too, it got me more in the mood to wanting to get more Fantastic Four. And this is issue 153 from volume number one. This came out in 1974 with a Gil Kane cover, and this cover is what sold me. Kawabunga had two different copies of this. One was a little bit lower grade, and the colors were a little more faded, but this one was so bright and vibrant. I was like, yes, I have to have this. I didn't realize until recently that I had been looking at the previous issue online and almost picked up 152 online recently. I ended up not doing that, and then it got sold before I had a chance to swing back around and pick it up, but... 152 is definitely on my want list, and this is the conclusion of the story. This story also introduces Thundra back into our Earth, or at least the Earth that the Marvel characters live on in the story, because uh, she was from a different planet. And I know that Thundra had been part of the FF issues for a while uh, in this era, too, but this was the story that brought her back. Interestingly enough, I talked about that Fantastic Four issue that I bought at the comic show and how Medusa wasn't in much of it. Medusa really isn't in much of this story either. She doesn't come in until about, uh, I don't know, a third into the story before she makes her appearance. But still enjoyed it. Love this era of FF. And I wouldn't be surprised if next year I don't concentrate on trying to get some more FF issues into my collection. I wasn't done with FF, though little offshoot of FF. This is something I've been wanting for a while. 
I remember in 2019 when they launched the Invisible Woman miniseries. I think it's a six issue miniseries. Mark Wade wrote this. Of course, this is the gorgeous A cover done by Adam Hughes and an iconic image. I remember at the time when this was new, I almost picked it up and I thought, well, how cool is that that Invisible Woman actually gets her own comic book, even if it is just a limited series? I still thought that was pretty cool. I really enjoyed this story. I didn't know if I would. Some modern comics to me aren't as good as the older ones, but I really liked this. I, I liked how it ended on the cliffhanger too, and the cliffhanger, the cliffhanger ending rather, really made me want to pick up issue number two. So I'll probably end up uh, picking that up, and if I enjoy that, just getting the rest of the miniseries sometime next year as well. Last year, when I was managing the comic book store, this is a book that we had several copies of as a back issue, and I always meant to get around to buying it at some point and then just never got around to it. So, you know, here we are a year later, pretty much since the store is closed. I'm still living in the same town that the store opened up at, and I do miss it a lot. And, I don't know, a couple months ago, not so much now, but a couple months ago, I really was, I, w I was thinking so heavily on that, and kind of like, oh, it's Tuesday. You know, I would have had new DC releases today or, you know, on Saturdays. Oh, that's when the store closed. That's when I started making room for the new DC releases that were going to be on Tuesday on the shelf. And I was just starting to pinpoint like each day what I would have done if the store had been opened. I really miss the customers from the store a lot. I've only had a chance to see a few of them or only run into a few of them. But I really miss the customers a lot. I miss that experience so much. It is what it is. So, you know, in the grand scheme of things, I don't mean to, to kind of jump off topic here, but in the grand scheme of things, I think I know the reason why life brought me to this portion or to this town. Um, I just wish the job was still around. So, missed the store. I, I drove by it one day and I saw that there was, uh, one of the windows was boarded up. So I, there's not a business in there now. So I don't know what happened if someone tried to break in or how the glass got broke or what exactly went down there. But a year later, and I still I miss it a lot. So I was good at it too, I'll say that. But I digress. We'll get back into... Uh, some of the books that I picked up today. Great series, though. Love this cover, too. Love that they made uh, Sue Storm Richards such a strong character. And, oh, also I want to mention on here, too, look at in the trade dress, how in the B, how they got her looking like that spy silhouette shadow. That's pretty awesome in there, too. Well, you know that I'm collecting Peter Parker's Spectacular Spider-Man comic books because I did... Man, a whole um, monthly series, you know, Spectacular Spider Hauls. And this is one that I didn't have in my Spectacular Spider Hall and wanted to get. This is Peter Parker's Spectacular Spider-Man Volume 1, issue number 56. So I had consecutively issues 1 through 55, and then I had issue 57. So I definitely wanted issue 56. This came out in 1981. Roger Stern wrote the story. It's another strong story. I am so glad that I have these Peter Parker Spectacular Spider-Man comic books because I enjoy them so much, and they've held up throughout the years. Now, Frank Miller is the cover artist on here. He doesn't do the interiors, but it's still great interior art. Great cover, though. This scene actually does take place inside the comic book story as we have Spider-Man uh, battling uh, Jack-O-Lantern. And this almost looks like a poster to me. Couldn't you see this just being a poster? Because I certainly could. Great story, though. And, uh, you know, the plan is to fill in the issues that I'm missing from Peter Parker's Spectacular Spider-Man, at least the issues I have up until issue 125. So my goal, I don't know if I'm going to go beyond 125. I'll see how the stories are around that time. But uh, filling in the ones that I need, which are a little bit more of the keys from that area. Not all of them, because I have, like, First Cloak and Dagger and, and books like that. But... Trying to fill in my gap for Peter Parker's Spectacular Spider-Man. I plan to continue making that a priority for me in 2024. I've been showing Justice League of America books in my JLA halls. 
Um, since I didn't get this one from Silver Age Dave, it qualifies to show in today's video. If I would have gotten it from Silver Age Dave, I would have shown it in a JLA Hall video. But a book that I did get from uh, Silver Age Dave was Justice League of America, Volume 1, Issue Number 37. But this is the follow-up issue, Issue Number 38. It's a two-parter of the annual JLA-JSA team-ups. I talked about the first part in my JLA Hall Volume 1 video, which was Comic Book Editions Volume 163. So here we have a Mike Sikowski, Murphy Anderson cover. This, and I had forgotten this when I was at Cowabunga and I was looking at the books. I especially started looking at the roll call on the side with Flash, and I'm like, why does Flash have a mustache? Someone drew a mustache on him. I'm like, great, because I wanted to get this book, and it's in nice condition, and, and someone drew a mustache on him. And then Cowabunga had another copy of it, and there also was a mustache on Flash. And then I pulled up my um, CLZ app and I looked at the picture. I'm like, oh, that isn't someone drawing a mustache on. And it actually is a mustache. But what I had forgotten, the Justice League here, as you see on the roll call, and you might even notice here, we have a blonde Superman. It looks more like Aquaman, but it's not. It's a blonde Superman. But the Justice League in this story are not the actual Justice League. They were replaced by villains in the previous story by the evil Johnny Thunder of Earth-1 using Earth-2 Johnny's Thunders, uh, Johnny Thunder's Thunderbolt to do his bidding. So I love the first issue of this two-parter, but the second issue kind of fell a little bit flat for me. This definitely is a JSA-heavy story with the real... Justice League, not the impersonators, but the real Justice League, only showing up in, like, the last page of the story. And it's it, it's one of those, what I kind of consider a cop-out plot, because at the end, you know, the Johnny Thunder of Earth 1 says, oh, I wish this all never happened, and that's what made everything go back to the way it was and essentially restored the original people, like Hal Jordan being Green Lantern and Clark Kent being Superman and so on and so forth, restored them to... Uh, the JLA, and the JLA has no memory of this ever existing tale. Only a couple people had, had memories of this tale ever having existed. So a little bit of a cop-out story, but works for my uh, JLA collection. And by the way, I'm still not done with my JLA haul. I have one coming in December, uh, JLA haul video, my part four or four from the books that I picked up from Silver Age Dave. And I'm, there's some really good books in that haul that I'm excited to show and share with you. This book, I've been thinking about this book for a while, and uh, it's DC Special Issue 16. It's from 1974. Everything included in this book is a reprint. So that's why I never really picked this book up before. But throughout the years, I've seen some people add this to their collection, and I was like, I, I kind of feel like I want it. And I saw it in such nice condition at the store that I'm like, and it was so affordable that I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to get it this time. So the four stories uh, are all super gorilla themed from different issues. We have a reprint from Detective Comics 339, Wonder Woman issue 170, Flash, I believe it's 127, then Superman issue 138. And all of those individual issues, they were battling gorillas and they compiled those four stories into one book in this DC special. I'm unsure on the cover why in the center here it says first DC issue, because this is issue 16. And this is a 50 center, which you got to keep in mind back in 1974, that was an expensive comic book. Um, you know, looking back, there was an Amazing Adventures book that I left at the store just because I forgot about it. I probably should have gotten the Amazing Adventures one instead of this one. But I still don't regret getting this one because it's just fun. You know, at some point I'll post this on Instagram, you know, in the future. It's just a fun conversational cover, even though there's nothing original in the book. So. Now, while that concludes the books that I picked up in Oconomowoc at Cowabunga Comics, I still have something else I want to show you. Before I get into that, I just want to say if you're new to my channel and haven't subscribed yet, I hope you'll take this opportunity to do so. You'll see more of my videos and be reminded when new stuff's added if you subscribe. I'm trying to get to 1K, that's the ultimate goal. Sharing the channel in this video with someone that you think might enjoy, it's another great way to show support, and I certainly do appreciate it. Give this video a thumbs up, a like, a heart, whatever you need to do to favorite, to help the algorithm. 
because I appreciate that as well. So I have one more thing that I want to share with you in today's video. I've already posted this on Instagram, and uh, you can follow me on Instagram at the Magic Lasso. But I posted this on Instagram the day after it came out. And I'm just excited to get it because I love omnibuses. And uh, they have released the Golden Age Wonder Woman Omnibus Volume 5. It just came out a few weeks back. And I got my copy on day one of its release. This is the first time I had ordered from OrganicPriceBooks.com and had such a positive experience with that that I definitely am going to order from them again. They've already solicited the next Golden Age Wonder Woman omnibus for the summer of 2024, although likely I expect that to get bumped back a little bit, but I'll probably pre-order that from OrganicPriceBooks.com. You know, they announced a Dazzler omnibus, and I think I want to save and start to get that too, because even though I have all the individual issues, I still think that that would be a bunch of fun. DC kind of has a habit of starting titles and not finishing them. And I definitely want them to finish the Golden Age. A lot of the books in this volume, or at least starting with this volume, have never been reprinted ever in any way. Not digital, um, not in reprinted in other comic books or in trades or anything. The majority of the stories in this aren't. This omnibus had been delayed quite some time. I think originally it was supposed to come out a couple years ago. And something else that's really weird in the original solicitation for this book, they talked about the issues that would be included, and they also said Action Comics 142. And I kept thinking, I don't remember a Wonder Woman appearance in Action Comics around that era. I just, what is it? So I went on the internet, man, I don't know, back in the spring or the summer, and I actually found someone who had scanned in every page of Action Comics 142, including the ads, so I went through it looking for Wonder Woman. I'm like, she is nowhere in this book, nowhere in the story. Why are they including this in this omnibus? Obviously, that must have been an error by somebody because the reference to Action Comics 142 is definitely omitted uh, from what they list as the contents of this omnibus. And it's not in there. So must have been some error, but someone's error <laughs> equaled a lot of time wasted for me trying to figure out why that was going to be included. This omnibus wraps up all of the sensation comic appearances that Wonder Woman made. So it has uh, reprints from her own title as well as the sensation comics title. They haven't announced, at least yet, the contents for the Volume 6 Golden Age omnibus. I'm thinking that they probably need to do two more volumes, uh, 6 and 7, to get all of the Golden Age stuff in for the omnibus format at least for the Wonder Woman title. That's what I'm thinking is probably going to happen. But I'll just keep hoping that they chug away at that, especially since I said before, a lot of these stories have never been reprinted. It's my, it's my chance to have them into my collection. So we'll see. Uh, Silver Age wise, you know, they've already released Silver Age Volume 1, Volume 2, and then they have the Mod Era Diana Prince Omnibus too. So they only need to do a Volume 3 for Silver Age, and that would probably cover the entire Silver Age. And then I really want them to get into a Bronze Age because there are no Bronze Age Wonder Woman omnibuses yet. That's, as you know, is my jam in my wheelhouse. But I love my omnibuses. And um, the more omnis that I get, the happier I become. But I just wanted to share that. Even though this isn't, you know, a lot of times I don't share my latest pickups. I don't share the A and the B covers or anything like that. I for Because I don't buy a lot of new books. But most of all, I only share it if it's an incentive cover or if it's um, some type of uh, retailer exclusive. Even though this didn't fall into that category, I wanted to share this omnibus with you anyway that I've recently added into my collection. Do you love omnibuses? Do you have any of the books that I showed today? Are you looking for any of the books or any of the titles? We can discuss all of that in the comments section below as your comments are welcomed, encouraged, and appreciated. So drop me a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for making it to the end of this comic book editions video today. Join me for my next one coming up again next week. Don't forget about Fanboys Live and the Retro Review this upcoming weekend. And of course, there's the Back Issue of the Week YouTube Short. I'm getting close to um, wrapping up two solid years of Back Issue of the Week YouTube Shorts. So join me, uh, the one that's already up, as well as every Monday morning when I drop a back issue of the week short. It's fun. It's 60 seconds of knowledge about a comic book, a back issue out of my personal collection. 
Catch you next week for the next Comic Book Editions video. Hope that you have a happy, healthy, and successful week. And I'll see you soon. Take care.